Hello, it's Cecil and Verse, and today I'm going to be walking you through the list I made of speculative fiction short stories that are available for free online that are by black authors because the way it is now it could be a little difficult to figure out which stories fulfill the prompts just because of how I decided to organize it and I wanted to note that in making this list I looked at Soyla Kenya's list that she made for the African science fiction fantasy readathon that she posted a few months ago. Her list is linked in list that I made and I will also link it down below and I recommend checking out Soyla Kenya's content. So I'm just going to give you a quick tour of the document. At the top I give a little disclaimer about who I am, why I made this list, and also that this list draws on the one that Soyla Kenya made and I link her list. Then I have this little introduction or just kind of talk about my rationale for making the list. When I first made the list I was only going to do print short stories and then I started to find some audio for free and then I also found some comics okay so first it's organized by medium the print short stories are in the front then there are the uh, audio stories and then at the end are a few comics and unfortunately that is very scarce right now I hope to flesh that out in the future and for each magazine, I just put the logo. I give a brief description of what the magazine is about, where they're based, do they have a focus, and then within the magazine, I organize alphabetically by author's last name, and where possible, I provided pronouns but just keep in mind that like I'm not constantly updating the pronouns and that some people are going to change theirs and I might not have the most recent ones in here and so you know best practice is to go straight to the source if you're trying to figure out people's pronouns and so for each story I provide title with a link the author's name I give a brief like one sentence or so synopsis and then I have a points of interest section. In the points of interest section I will usually list things that don't make it into the summary. That could be certain types of representation that are here. That could be if it fits a prompt for the, the readathon. I provided some very basic content warnings. I think the ones I focused on screening for were use of slurs, abuse, or um, gore, and some magazines provided more comprehensive summaries or more comprehensive content warnings, and if I did, I listed that in the description so that you know where to find them. If I knew that a story existed but I didn't have time to read it and give the little summary and the content warning, it's highlighted and that's just like a note for me to circle back and give the information about it. So apologies that it's not the most polished looking document as of right now, but I'm hoping that it will be useful for people in finding short stories and, and literary magazines that they enjoy. So in terms of stories that I would recommend, for the LGBT plus main character prompt, there's Birds of a Feather by Ebony J. Dunbar, which appeared in Anathema magazine. This story is an alternating point of view short story. One of the narrating characters is trans and it features an MM relationship. I think there's just a lot of things to like about this story. I'm a sucker for stories with deities in them and those feature heavily here. And I really liked how Dunbar uses werewolves and insta-love in this story. I thought that was innovative and cute and I enjoyed Dunbar really looking at the consequences of insta-love. Like having faith in it, having faith in their feelings, wanting to pursue their feelings and also being like this is so fast, where do we go from here? And my other recommendation would be Can't Beat Him by Nella Hopkinson, which appeared in Uncanny Magazine. I think just like the lust in this one stood out. Features a cute plumber, there's some flirting, there's like a tension in the air. And I just really enjoyed reading about that. Then for the horror prompt, there's Sweet Grass Blood by Eden Royce, which appeared in Nightmare Magazine. Royce is a wonderful short story author. I'd really encourage you to read more of her work. 
She has an anthology out. I think it's called Spook Lights, and she has a middle grade coming out in January called Root Magic. And this short story stood out to me because uh, Royce is Gullah Geechee, and the protagonist in this short story is also Gullah Geechee. And it's about wanting to investigate and be a historian, but also having to reckon with the fact that not everything needs to be public knowledge and not everyone that you want to write about or publicize about necessarily wants the attention. I just really enjoyed the creepiness and the nature of the haunting that happens. And then next is The Night Sun by Zinni Rockland, which was published in Tor. This was a short story that N.K. Jemison praised on Twitter. I enjoy werewolves and this is a werewolf story. There's like gore in here and it is gross and well described. I like the layers and how the werewolves were introduced and the supernatural elements in this story. So for Disability Rep, I would recommend You Perfect Broken Thing by C.L. Clark, which was published in Uncanny Magazine. This features protagonists with a degenerative muscle disease. I think this is one that I read initially and it confused me. And in revisiting it and thinking on it, I sort of found more meaning on it. This short story kind of satirizes how in the U.S. a lot of research depends on disease visibility and sort of making a spectacle out of people coping with the illness. And then there's The Things I Miss Most by Nisi Shaw, which is also featured in Uncanny Magazine. In this one, the protagonist has epilepsy and there is a cure that they request, which involves getting a computer chip installed in their brain. And this one was just trippy and strange. It talks about sort of the complications of the treatment that the protagonist sought and complications aren't exactly what I was expecting to happen. So in terms of social justice oriented, there's Fair by Danny Lore, which appeared in Fireside Magazine. Uh, Danny Lore really likes to write about werewolves in their short fiction. And this is a story that uses werewolves as an allegory to discuss the opioid crisis, which I thought was a really interesting take on it. I hadn't really ever seen it framed that way. And then there's On the Feeding Habits of Humans, a first-hand account by Khalida Muhammad Ali and Rachel K. Jones, which appeared in Drabblecast. This is about the food system in the US. I just like the way that it unfolded. It starts with these inquisitive aliens who just kind of ask a simple question. And then from their one simple question, they sort of look at all these different facets of agriculture and food distribution and, you know, food retail and like all this other stuff. And I just really enjoyed how it kind of went from something simple to something a lot bigger and more all-encompassing. So then for author not from US or Canada, I would recommend 58 Rules to Ensure Your Husband Loves You Forever by Rafiat Aliu, which appeared in Nightmare Magazine. Uh, Rafiat Aliu is Nigerian. And I don't know if this is like a subgenre of horror or something, but I feel like in the very little horror that I read, I've noticed some authors will write about women who will do horrific things to maintain a marriage even when the marriage is like not good and doesn't really serve them. And I felt like this firmly falls in that vein. It's horrifying, it's bloody, it was quite a good read. So then for probably my favorite prompt, there's gods as characters. I just, I'm a sucker for folklore. I love when gods appear in books and in stories. So this is like easily my favorite prompt for this readathon. And for this one, I recommend Shioma's Land by Nisi Shaw, which appeared in Clark's World. Nisi Shaw is a short story powerhouse. If you haven't read their collection, Filter House, I super recommend it. It is really good. And Shioma's Land features a pantheon that I think Shaw created. And I love stories that show the gods as being powerful and also petty, complex, and even harmful to the humans that worship them. And the gods in Shoma's land are all that. They are kind of disinterested in humanity. They kind of see humanity as pets at best. And I also really enjoy stories where the protagonist seems like they're boxed in, like they're, they're trapped and there's no way out, and they sort of manage to get things in their favor. And this is a story that does that as well, so... I really recommend this short story. It's one of my favorites by Shaw. 
And then my other recommendation would be Woman with a Thousand Stars in Her Hair by Ayodel Olofintuade, which appeared in Anathema magazine. The god in question is Olokun, who makes sort of a one-off appearance. This is a story of Mamiwata spirits. I love stories with people who are able to live and breathe underwater. The protagonist has to make some very difficult decisions, and I just love the mysticism in it and the tragedy. So if we're not set on Earth, there is The Evaluators by N.K. Jemisin, which appeared in Wired. Now, this one's set in space. But it's kind of interesting to read this um, science fiction story in comparison with some of the other ones that Jemison has written about aliens and other worlds. I think it's a bit more conventional in terms of the plot, but I think it's really well executed. I think the creepiness of this unknown predator alien played out really well. Love when you finally understand what's happening and you reread it and it's just so much creepier than it was the first time around. So this is one I would definitely recommend. And then for love, I'd recommend The Simplest Equation by Nikki Drayden. Um, I listened to it on LeVar Burton Reads, but I believe that Glittership also has a print version online for people who just want to read it. This is a short story about a romantic love between a human girl and an alien. The alien tutors her in math because the human is really, really bad at math. And the alien is from a people that really value math and like math is like everything to them. And it's about this budding love between the human and the alien. And it's also about the human learning to love math, which is a subject that has frustrated and annoyed her for so long. And I thought that was relatable. I had to take calculus in college and it was a mess and a half. I struggled so hard and so I definitely <laughs> related to this story. The beginning, not so much not so much the end, not so much the end. My last recommendation is Toothsome Things by Chimeda Mohegbu, which appeared in Strange Horizons. This is a story that I love. It's so abstract because it's narrated by an entity and we don't really ever know who's talking when. Like, there aren't speech holes or anything like that. I feel like the structure is very experimental. But it really riffs on folk tales like Little Red Riding Hood and The Boy Who Cried Wolf. And I really like that aspect of it, how it weaves these things together to create a completely new story. And it's about a romantic love and it's also about a filial love between a grandmother and her granddaughter. So... That was the video. Are you a fan of short stories? Are there any that you think you'll be checking out? Was this video helpful in any way? Do you think the short story list is going to be helpful in any way? I know short stories aren't always people's first pick, but it is something that I've grown to love a lot more within like the past year or so. Um, if you like the video, please hit the like button. If you want to stay up to date with me and my bookish activities, please subscribe. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. Goodbye.